If you like this video, why not subscribe? And Hey everyone, we're back with the weekly recap, the show where we talk about last week's emails, comments, and links. And yes, today is a holiday, but we're doing the recap anyway, because I can't do it any other time this week. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, first, let's address last week's question, which was, will you help me spread the word? And I got all kinds of emails about ideas people had, about marketing campaigns, and there were contests, and uh, movie compilations, and shout outs, and all kinds of great ideas. Uh, but in the end, I think, you know, what everybody told me, uh, I think I'm going to stick with, which is, hey, we're helping promote your show the way it is. Don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I really don't have time to embark on any big marketing plan. Um, but I appreciate everyone's willingness to help out. So if you just keep doing what you're doing, I think it's working. Uh, my numbers are definitely up. I think this show is part of it because I'm getting more of a conversation with you guys. Uh, so, but I appreciate the input. Keep it coming. If you have any good ideas, I'm definitely willing to implement them. And there is something I'm actually going to talk about today in an email somebody sent me about another idea we can use to help market each other. Uh, so that was the question and the results from last week's question. This week's question, as you may notice by the title above, is uh, what should I do on Twitter? Now, a few weeks back, we had a there was a great blog post from Edward Norton. Edward Norton, Ed Burns, um, who was making the movie Newlyweds, and he is he had used Twitter quite actively in that post to inform his fan base about what was going on. And so I have a Twitter account. It's uh, Frugal Filmmaker um, on Twitter, twitter.com/frugalfilmmaker or at frugalfilmmaker if you go through a mobile device or another way. Um, and we have a decent number of followers, like 800, uh, but if you think there's something I could be doing better with Twitter, I want to know about it. Uh, right now, all I'm really doing is I'm sending, whenever I get a link for Facebook, I send it to Twitter as well. And once in a while, I'll do some, you know, update or something that I'm working on or idea that I have. But I could probably be a lot more active with that. So I want to hear your ideas. What can I do with Twitter to make it better? And uh, if you feel the urge, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, tell others to do so. And then we can, I can do something with it that might be useful. So, on to the uh, emails. This is, uh, this is the thing I was talking about. This is from uh, Adam Davis. He sent me an email saying, My first project, a short film named Temper, has been accepted by Kickstarter, and I'm trying to earn $375 for it. I was wondering if you would give me a shout-out on the weekly recap. I give, I, I've given you a mention on the project, project's page. I'm not looking for anything to gain just because of how much you've helped me out. If you give me a shout-out, I'll do a write-up about the making of the film on a low budget using your projects for your site. Now, I typically get a lot of requests for things like this, such as any kind of press release or movie somebody's working on. Hey, can you help me get the word out? And typically I say no because I'm really not getting anything out of it. I mean, I, I appreciate everyone's working on movies, um, but it's got to be kind of a two-way thing. I mean, you got to give me a little something. So Adam has come up with a great idea here. He's basically told me, hey, if you give a mention of my movie... Um, you know, I'll put the link in my page, your, your site, and I'll do a write-up at the end of how we used all your gear on my movie. And I thought that was a great trade. Um, even though, you know, he's only asking for a little bit of money, but I'm willing to help out anybody that's willing to, to do this kind of a marketing thing. Um, you're, you're embedding my website in your Kickstarter page, and then you're going to, you know, do a write-up or maybe some behind-the-scenes using my gear and mentioning me there. Hey, I'd be more than happy to send as much traffic as I can your direction. And I think um, Adam's goal here is definitely reachable, $375. He's already got like a third of it, I think, so anyone that wants to contribute. Uh, Adam, my only advice would be that when you're doing a Kickstarter campaign, try and make your video as dynamic as possible. I mean, you're definitely a passionate filmmaker, but I wanted to see like maybe some concept sketches of your project or uh, maybe have some actors there with you to talk to them or maybe some locations you want to use. Anything that spices up and makes it look really, really interesting. I think you have an interesting story, but I'd want to know more. Um, so feel free to, you know, you're a filmmaker, make a great film to promote your Kickstarter project. And, although I think you're definitely going to reach your goal. So good luck. Yeah, finger licking. All right. Next up, we have a question uh, from Chris Upton. Sent me an email. He said, uh, this is about the PVC stabilizer. He said, I'm thinking the bolt isn't long enough. Should the camera continue to spin easily once it's locked as far as it will go? Maybe that is how it's supposed to be, but the camera turns very easily. Uh, if I quickly turn the rig some ways. Any suggestions? I've addressed this before in a previous video, but it's definitely something worth revisiting because it's not supposed to do that, Chris. I'm sorry. Um, what happened was, is when I made mine in my video, notice I've got that XLR box on the bottom. So the, the screw depth, it was much deeper. So when I put my quarter inch screw through that box, it had a lot further to travel. And so it easily locked down. But if you have a standard uh, tripod mount, it's not going to go all the way and you're, you're going to have that excess 
which means your camera is going to spin. So what some people have done is they've actually put a nut underneath the screw so it can't travel as far. Um, some people, and of course that means the bolt will stick out more and it won't, when you set the rig down, it'll kind of pivot on that bolt. So they've replaced the rear bottom elbow with a T-joint so that it rises above that. Um, some people have put like a rubber washer uh, over the top of the bolt, to, which is a good idea, I think. Um, between the so that that'll reduce the excess space as well between the camera and the stage, so that's what I would suggest. I'm sorry that happened. I should have caught that. Okay, this is from Brian Backhouse. Sent me an email saying I put together your C clamp with a slight mod to the rubber tip instead of the chair tip. I used a three eighths inch rubber wire tip on it and no modifications to the tip at all. Uh, I purchased the wire tips at a caster supply shop for four cents four cents each. This is a great tip. I've always had, even ever since the video, I've had trouble with my chair tip because when I turn the screw and clamp it to something, that steel end likes to dig through that chair tip. And I've put some washers in there. I keep, have to, keep having to replace them. So I think uh, Brian's is a great idea here. Although, Brian, if you can tell him, give me a link or something where I can get some of these uh, wire rubber wire tips. Or if anybody else knows of a link, I'd be really happy to get some of these because I like using the clamp. It's really handy. Uh, but I need a way to protect my gear um, when I'm using it, and this sounds like a perfect solution. I just need to find it, these rubber wire tips. So give me a link, or if anybody else knows where I can get some, or maybe I can just ask someone to order some for me, like you, Brian. Okay, next up is from Justin Loga. He asks, I was wondering what you would recommend for the watts of a key light and the two other lights for three-point lighting. Um, I'm going to assume you're talking about the three-point lighting video where I was using two clamp lights and then a spotlight and back. Um, I typically, I still use those when I have the three-point lighting set up. Um, and I typically use two 100-watt bulbs, one for the key light, one for the fill light. The key light's typically closer, and I'll move the fill light back so it's not as intense. Or I'll drop the wattage, I'll use like a 60-watt bulb maybe for the fill light. Um, and the backlight, I'm using a halogen spot, 75-watt halogen spot attached to a dimmer, and that allows me to control the intensity of the light. So that's typically my setup and wattage for that. Okay, Mitch W. asks me, I want uh, to make a mount for my camera so I can shoot video while I'm playing airsoft. So he wants a camera mount for his airsoft gun, which probably has, if it's a rifle, it'll have a, like a weaver rail, which you can mount stuff to, although there's no real camera mount uh, made for a weaver rail. But I think I might have to make one of those. So I don't have a solution for you right this second, Mitch, um, but I think I might want to put one of those together because I've definitely seen a lot of those camera angles coming from airsoft guns that might be useful to you and others. So I'll, I'll work on that. Sorry I don't have a solution for you right this second. But if anybody else does, comment. Comment below. Okay, next up, I uh, have a question through YouTube. Bob Zico Production sent me a message and asked, what is the font you use for your video? I've been searching for it for a year. Uh, I'm assuming you're using, you're, you're talking about the kind of military kind of shot up looking stencil font that I use in the Frugal Filmmaker videos. Um, that is the Armalite rifle font. I got it from uh, 1001 Free Fonts, where I get all my fonts. You can find the link below in the description, and uh, you can find a link for a Mac or Windows font. So you can install it easily, and you please use it, abuse it. Okay, Osboy Pro sent me a message about the camera stabilizer rig. He says I made the stabilizer rig, and it looks all sweet, but when I mounted my DSLR to the T-joint and the camera keeps falling to the side. I was just wondering how did you get the T-joint to stay and not fall to one side? Would you, would putting tape around it help it from moving? Uh, well, I wouldn't, this is lack of friction, obviously. Some slip joints are really snug and others aren't. So what I do when I want to snug them up is I don't put tape around the joint. I actually put a little tab of tape inside the joint so that it creates more friction. So I have to jam it on to the connecting parts and it'll stay better. Another thing you can do is you can take some kind of uh, pliers and just like mangle the heck out of the, the, the pipe that's going inside of the T so that it creates a lot of plastic burrs that will stick inside and give you more friction. Uh, obviously the best solution is to glue everything. I typically don't do that because I'm always taking things apart. Um, but the tape will work. Like I said, just use it inside. Get a piece of gaffer's tape, something with some thickness. I wouldn't recommend like masking tape or scotch tape, but something like duct tape or gaffer's tape, something that has a little thickness to it. Or, like I said, mar up, the, mar up the piece going inside the T. And that should work. I've done that before, like on the frugal floater, I had to do that. Okay, uh, M. Wood asks me, what is a good external mic for a Canon H HD21 Vixia? Uh, I talked about lav mics last show, 
And uh, this time I'm going to assume you're asking for a shotgun mic that you can mount on your camera or on the end of a boom pole. I've included a fantastic link in the description um, about a shotgun shootout. It's a link I send to everybody that asks me this question because not only it has like the main shotgun mics that people can buy from I think starting with the Rode video mic, which is like $150. I realize not super, super cheap, but if you have some money to spend, spend it on audio because uh, it's really important. Anyway, the, the comparison goes from like the Rode video mic all the way up to an expensive Sennheiser, I think. Um, I use the Sennheiser ME66. It's kind of a middle of the road mic as far as cost. is about $400. And the only reason I had $400 to spend was because I bought it like 10 years ago when the Olympics were in Salt Lake City and a local pro audio shop ordered a bunch of these mics and uh, I guess had some extra so they sold me one for 385 and it's been great ever since. Uh, but that's a fantastic shootout, and I, it was a, the DV store, I think, or somebody did it, and there's sound samples, and it's just really great. So check that one out. Okay, uh, the dude guy, 101, sent me a message. He said, hey, I was wondering about tripod heights. I was surprised when I went to the store and saw four foot, five foot, five and a half foot, and the biggest being six. What is a good height to get? Well, this, of course, depends on your need. I, I use a tripod. Uh, I be, well, my tripod actually extends to something crazy like seven feet high. And that may seem like a lot, and it is, but I've actually used that full extension sometimes because I've liked to kind of have a high angle without having to set up a crane or a jib or anything like that. So that's handy. It all depends on what you want. Um, you know, of course, a, a tripod like that, like mine, is a beast. It's super heavy. It weighs like, I don't know, 20, yeah, 20 pounds, but it's heavy, um, which is nice if I want to mount like my crane on it or go really high. But as far as lugging around for general use, it's a pain. So consider that, uh, you know, the average height of a person is what, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, for a woman maybe, and 5'8", five, 5'9", five, for a man, 5'10". So you might want to find something that's in that general height range, pick something that's maybe not too heavy. It all depends on what your needs are, just say, you know, what am I using this tripod for, and then buy accordingly. That's what I would suggest. I wish I had a lighter tripod, but I just have the big one. Okay, on to comments. Uh, I've got a comment on my blog. Uh, where Anonymous said, uh, referring to the CG20 um, that I pointed people to as being the best fil entry-level filmmaker camera, he says, I love this camera, I have two, however there is no manual exposure mode like on the CG10, however there is an AC input socket, it has a cover for it, I got an AC adapter that works on eBay for $8 shipped. If you have the CG20, I've actually included a link to an eBay uh, power supply that I found, it was $10 I think. Uh, but there's a link down there, and someone else told me the CG20 doesn't do 1080p, and I think I mistakenly told people it did 1080p. It does 1080i, which isn't bad, but it still does 720p, and now that you have an i mode or an interlace mode, now you can use the super slow-mo trick that I did a video on because you can control the shutter speed on that camera. So just a little clarification about that. Uh, if you're looking for those cameras still, you know, go to my blog, just click on the link, try and track them down through Radio Shack. A lot of people have told me that those, uh, those product finders are pretty lame because... People, people will return stock and it shows up or the, the stocking system isn't that great. I called in my area or I found three that were listed in my area. One of them actually had the camera. One of them had a return they were sending back and the third one didn't have the camera but it was still listed as being there. So apologize for that. Hopefully you can find one of those cameras or a CG10 because they're really great. Okay, Monkey Knuckles 2 made a comment about last week's show, the recap show, saying... Uh, well, actually, he was clarifying because one of the questions last week was, "How do I get those? How do, you, how do I get a bicycle grip on those half-inch PVC pipes? Because they get they tend to get stuck." Uh, Monkey Knuckles Two suggests for the grips. Back in my BMX days, we used to add some liquid dishwashing soap to a bowl of warm water and soak the grips. Soak them for 10 seconds, pull them out, slide them on, let them dry, and they'll never move. And to the same uh, problem, Nop Top, our buddy Dave Nop from Quick Effects. Uh, says, use hairspray, the oldest trick in the book to get the bike grips on your rigs. It'll slide on then dry sticky. Oil, which is one of the idea, the uh, things the guy asked about, if you should use oil, will keep your grip sliding forever. So don't use oil. Okay, next up, uh, Vic Vic 19841 commented about the camera crane jib video. He says, where did you buy the plugs and the training wheels? I went to Home Depot and Ace Hardware, but I can't still find it. This seems to be a big problem. I'm really kind of surprised. Um, that the core, the half, the half inch PVC plugs have a little flat top and fit into like a T joint. Um, people seem to have a hard time finding those. So I don't know what to tell you, um, other than keep checking hardware stores or buy them online. Home Depot's got them on their website. Um, that's unfortunate because they're super handy and I use them all the time. 
And as far as the training wheels go, as mentioned in the video, I got them on eBay. They were about 10 bucks, uh, which is too much money, I think, but that's the only price I could get them for. And the Frugal uh, Crane 2.0, we're actually going to replace the training wheels with, with a part from Home Depot that I'm going to share with everybody, and that's actually less expensive. Actually, it's about a dollar cheaper uh, than the $10 for the training wheels. So hold on for that. All right, Long, Long and, Long and, Leslie, Long and Elise, Log and Elise asks about the camera stabilizer rig. Does it have to be a certain spring? The answer is no. It's another another one of those parts that uh, people had trouble finding. It's the spring, the spring-loaded uh, camera platform. Um, but there's a part at Home Depot. It's a spring that goes in a weed whacker uh, you can use. I think, you know, I just had these springs laying around, but there, I, I, all you have to do is find a spring that fits over a quarter-inch 20 screw. Uh, some people have been really enterprising and use springs from old... Uh, battery holders that usually you have those laying around or you can pull them out of a toy or something so it doesn't have to be a certain spring it's just anything that fits over that screw is what you can use okay uh, Damari boards Domer boards probably Damari I'm guessing camera on the state camera stabilizer ring video any reason you, you chose to use t-joints at the bottom sides and not elbow joints yes there's a very good reason this is a great question um, I use two T-joints in front, as you may know, and then an elbow in the back so that when I set it on the ground, it doesn't sit flat. It actually tilts up a little bit because if you've ever done a ground level shot, level doesn't work. You need to have a little bit of tilt to get the shot to frame properly. And that's basically it because I want to be able to set it on the ground and get those shots and I've used it before and it works fine. If it's raised up evenly, the shot, it doesn't work for me. It might work for you. Um, plus, if you're using three elbow joints, it'll sit on the screw that sticks out the bottom and pivot. And I want it to be firm. I want it to be tilted up. So that's why I chose that. Uh, Richter Flip, Richter Philip One, Richter Philip One has made a comment uh, on the camera crane video. He asked me what kind of tripod I'm using. Uh, I'm using a tripod. Like I said, the Beast is a uh, Bogan 501 head. It's a fluid head, and the legs are oh man, 3046 legs, I believe. If that's wrong, I will correct this, but I'm pretty sure. That was just a com I bought this a long time ago through B&H, and that was just a combination they sold. Sold. Um, the 501 head is great. It's a great fluid head. It's lasted forever, over 10 years, um, and those legs are solid, although they're aluminum, and they've been little supporters are beat up, but the tripod still works. It works well. So, Okay, so that's all of the comments. Um, are all of our links from this past week, there's a slew of them from the Facebook group and on Twitter, and they're all in the description below. Uh, again, the week's question, this week's question is, what should I do with Twitter? Uh, I have a Twitter account. It's at Frugal Filmmaker, or fr twitter.com slash Frugal Filmmaker. Um, and I just want to know, you know, follow me on Twitter, and then tell me through this video or on Twitter, comment below, what you'd like to see me do with Twitter. Do you want me to give you daily updates on things that I'm doing? Or, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, let me know, because I'd like to utilize Twitter more effectively, and I just want some input on how to do that. Uh, coming up this Wednesday, I have a Frugal Filmmaker, a full Frugal Filmmaker episode. Uh, it's a simpler project, but it is a project. It's how to create a camera shoe to PVC adapter. So if you want to mount any of your PVC gear on top of your camera without using the stabilizer rig, I'm going to show you how to make a simple adapter. And finally, um, you know, come read the blog, frugalfilmmaker.com. Drop me an email if you want at frugalfilmmaker at gmail. Um, again, at, tw at frugalfilmmaker for Twitter. And uh, that's it. So I hope you like the show. Give me comments, input suggestions below. And uh, watch the show on Wednesday. And then we'll give you another recap on Monday. So we'll see you later.